Well, hey guys, I'm back for another mishmash Q&A. I know you guys really enjoy these and I'm sipping on my matcha tea. Um, this is a video where I just answer random skincare questions that I get asked a lot in the comments of my YouTube videos and over on Instagram. If you're new here, hi, my name is Andrea. I'm a board certified dermatologist. And if you like these kind of skincare Q&As, I have them all saved in a playlist so you can check those out. Real quick, I'd like to thank today's video sponsor, Walmart. You guys know I'm a huge fan of shopping at Walmart and some of my most popular skincare videos are of me going through Walmart and chit-chatting with you guys about the skincare and hair care products. They've really amped up their beauty selection over the past few years and skincare selection. It makes it just really easy. Question number one, can I use Arbutin and Tretinoin? Yes. Arbutin, if you're not familiar, is a skin lightening ingredient used to treat hyperpigmentation and melasma. It's derived from Berberry and it is a natural alternative to hydroquinone. Hydroquinone is a skin lightening ingredient that can actually be pretty irritating and it's toxic to melanocytes, but it is kind of the gold standard for treating hyperpigmentation, although we can only use it for a limited window of time. But Arbutin, on the other hand, is not toxic to those melanocytes. It doesn't have the risks that hydroquinone does as far as irritation and rebound worsening melasma. You can use it indefinitely. It's less irritating and overall well tolerated. How does it work? It inhibits that enzyme tyrosinase that leads to pigment production. Using it alongside tretinoin is actually a good idea. Anytime you have hyperpigmentation that you're looking to fade, coming at it with a few active ingredients is beneficial to target different arms of the pathways that lead to upregulation and pigment production. Uh, so tretinoin alone is wonderful for improving hyperpigmentation, whether it be to, due to post-acne marks, even melasma, but we frequently combine it with other skin lightening ingredients when we're trying to treat hyperpigmentation to get that, that multi-pronged approach. For example, there is a prescription medication, Triluma, that is tretinoin, and uh, hydroquinone and a low, low potency steroid cream to calm down any, any inflammation. And that's FDA approved to treat melasma and we use it to treat hyperpigmentation. But Arbutin is very well tolerated. It's safe to combine with other active ingredients. The only thing you need to know about it is that it does, it can degrade if it is left in high heat. So don't leave it in your car. I mean, I always encourage you guys not to do leave skincare products in the car, but Arbutin will become ineffective if it's heated. I don't think most of you all are cooking your serums, but just be aware of that. But yeah, it's safe to use it alongside other active ingredients. You can use it twice daily. Okay, this is a question I get a lot. You guys know I'm a huge fan of Function of Beauty shampoo, but I get some questions. Can you please recommend a more affordable everyday shampoo and conditioner? Yes, I have a few recommendations. First one is one that I shared with you guys in a recent empties. It's Maui Moisture, the Oahu Pui Shampoo. It leaves the hair very glossy and very manageable. It's good if you have dry hair, um, but it doesn't leave like a, any kind of buildup. It is um, cruelty-free, I believe. Very good. And the scent is, it kind of smells like, almost like a Christmassy scent. Anyways, my one gripe with that shampoo and conditioner though, as I mentioned in that video, is the packaging is difficult to dispense a reasonable amount of the product. You end up getting a big blob of the shampoo and that becomes difficult to rinse out. But otherwise, it is great, highly recommend it. And then this is a new shampoo and conditioner I've been trying out for you guys by Garnier. Now they claim to be cruelty free. It's the Garnier Fruit Fructis Pure Clean Hair Reset. I have the rebalancing shampoo, greasy hair and scalp, and then the hydrating conditioner hair and scalp. I have been really impressed with these. They also make a clarifying shampoo. I don't have it out here, but I've tried that as well. So if you're somebody who uses a lot of hair care products, and you need to remove that buildup by using a clarifying shampoo once a week, I suggest that one. It is great. The um, Pure Clean Hair Reset, the rebalancing shampoo, it has salicylic acid in it, and it also has um, charcoal, which can absorb some oiliness. I like that it has the pump bottle. Now, I haven't been using it long enough to finish it to know how easy it is to get everything out of here with the pump. So stay tuned on that. But so far, I've really been liking those, and I highly recommend them if you're looking for a more affordable shampoo and conditioner. Also have a more hydrating shampoo if you have drier hair. That one does have peppermint oil in it, though. It kind of gives a little bit of a tingle, which 
you know, is more of a sensory thing. It's basically fra a fragrance, but I thought I would mention that one too. They're all very good. What are your thoughts on lasers for melasma? There are a variety of lasers and light-based devices that have been tried for melasma. And long story short, the melasma comes back. It, it doesn't cure the melasma. It merely helps to accelerate the rate of clearance of any hyperpigmentation in the epidermis. With melasma, you have epidermal melasma and you have dermal melasma. Pigment up in the epidermis, and you can also have it down in the dermis. Laser and light-based devices, as well as chemical peels actually, basically accelerate the rate of clearance of existing hyperpigmentation in the epidermis, but they don't prevent the process that leads to melasma, so they're not a cure. Unfortunately, lasers also come with a risk of worsening the melasma, rebound worsening. Lasers and light-based devices, they are a third line option for melasma for people who are really just failing topicals and in which case they, the topicals still need to be continued because again, the light-based and laser, laser devices, they don't, they don't actually cure the melasma. They just kind of accelerate the rate of clearance, hasten clearance. What I mean by light-based devices specifically is IPL. IPL is not actually a laser because it emits a variety of wavelengths. IPL can help improve the appearance of melasma by accelerating the rate of clearance of hyperpigmentation, but it almost always comes back. And IPL actually does pose quite a risk of hyperpigmentation in people with deeper skin tones. So it's not a good option if you're Fitzpatrick phototype four or five. Now, then you have Q-switch laser. Now, Q-switch laser can help, again, in accelerating clearance but it almost always comes back. Then you have non-ablative fractional laser. Now that has actually been shown to get some good results in terms of clearing that hyperpigmentation, but it's not sustained. And then you have ablative. Ablative, unfortunately, does come without greater risk of hyperpigmentation. Now we have the newer Pico second laser, which is turning out to be a better option for people with deeper skin tones, but again, they only provide some temporary benefit. I have yet to really see anybody who has had long lasting sustained benefit from a laser light based device for their melasma. It's often used in conjunction with topicals like hydroquinone, skin lightening ingredients. I get this question a lot. Should I rinse my face before reapplying sunscreen? No, that defeats the purpose of reapplying sunscreen. Reapplying sunscreen, most people think they need to reapply sunscreen because they've been told that the sunscreen ingredients stop working, they degrade, and to a certain extent that is true, but the primary reason is that the sunscreens rub off and people don't apply enough sunscreen to begin with. So by reapplying, you are basically depositing more active sunscreen ingredient on the surface of your skin, ensuring that you get to a better level of protection with each reapplication. If you rinse or wash your face before doing that, well then you're gonna remove whatever sunscreen ingredients are remaining. You're gonna remove some of that, so you're gonna you know, kind of take several steps back. So don't wash your face before reapplying sunscreen or rinse the skin. Likewise, when you guys go to the beach or you swim in a pool, you wanna make sure you wear water resistant sunscreen. If you're in, obviously in the ocean, you're gonna be outside. But if you're in a pool that's outdoors, you wanna make sure you wear water resistant sunscreen so it'll hold up while you're in the water. But as soon as you get out, you need to apply more sunscreen because water resistant does not mean waterproof. It still comes off. It's substantivity on the skin is better than non-water resistant, so it'll protect you while you're in the water, but it won't protect you in the water indefinitely. So if you stay in the water for a long time, make sure you get out and reapply uh, because it will, it will come off. Now, you also need to reapply if you could towel dry the skin because that's rubbing it off. Many people who ask this question, I think are living in a humid climate, they're sweating a lot. The idea of putting sunscreen on over for all that perspiration, you know, is that gonna cause irritation? I think it freaks people out. I suggest choosing a sunscreen that is either in a gel vehicle with a low molecular weight alcohol to allow for a quick absorbing fast dry formula to help allow for better evaporation of sweat or a sunscreen that has dimethicone in it, a silicone, that too allows for better evaporation of sweat so that you don't, you don't end up overheating, causing too much irritation from sweat. So I will link some down below in the description box, but yeah, I mean, I don't, don't rinse your face before reapplying. 
Last but not least, I've been using Differin. It gave me good results in the beginning, but now my acne is flaring. Is it possible that Differin stops working or that you develop a tolerance to it? No, uh, the Differin, uh, which is a dapoline for those of you who aren't familiar, is a retinoid. It doesn't stop working and your skin cannot develop resistance to retinoids. The bacteria that live in your skin and co contribute to acne, uh, Cutibacterium acnes, they don't become resistant to, they don't develop resistance to retinoid because it's not an antibiotic, it's a retinoid. Anyways, uh, so no. Unfortunately, retinoids, they don't treat the hormonal component of acne. So many people will break through and have acne flares and adapalene alone is simply not enough to control their acne. They need other things. Um, and a lot of times that may be something that targets the hormonal aspect or reduces inflammation. But acne treatments, they don't stop working. Your skin doesn't become resistant to them or develop a tolerance to them. However, your acne will change, and that can change with stress, the weather, maybe you're using too many irritating skincare products, your diet, poor sleep, hormones around the menstrual cycle, all of these things can lead to breakthrough breakouts through the adapalene, through the different, or through any treatment that you are using. And in, many, in some cases, the treatment that you were using and that gave good control doesn't give that good control and definitely simply because the nature of your acne changes and you need something else to start controlling it. In which case, if that happens, it's worth exploring what lifestyle factors and things have changed for you. Are you more stressed out? Have you been eating a diet that's full of sugary processed foods? Is there something that you as an individual can modify in your lifestyle that might help also give you a little bit better acne control? Sleep, I have really been on a matcha tea kick. Anyways, guys, that's gonna wrap up this Q&A. Thank you, Walmart, for sponsoring today's video. If you guys enjoy these Q&As, on the end slate, I will post my last Q&A if you wanna watch that one too. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.